patients from the farm. And really, the reason we're all here today <laughs> is because of Mark and Jill and their courageous stand against a government that, that is out to harass them. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. once said, on some positions, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And on some positions, one must take a stand that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular. But one must take it because it is right. And that is exactly what Mark and Jill have done. And we are all going to benefit from that, as we've already seen from yesterday's court hearing and how they're looking. They're looking very carefully at this ruling and at our freedoms. Because what happens here in Michigan is going to spread around the rest of the country. And everybody's presence here was pivotal in making that happen. So I'd really like to introduce our hero today, Mark Baker. He's going to say a few words. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Liz. <clears throat> Before I say anything here, I'd like to recognize a few people. Uh, I'd like to recognize my wife. Yeah. If I could see her. I don't see her. She's cooking. She's cooking. She's cooking. If she's not doing that, she's doing laundry. <laughs> the books. We're eating her own food somewhere else. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. No, can I? Yeah, I got it. All right, uh, and then I'd like to introduce my children who've uh, stood by me on this. And I, if they're here, I'd like it if they'd stand up. Okay, this is Keith right here. Hands up, Keith. Next child, this is Rachel. Rachel is seven years old. Jim's right there. Can somebody hold him up? <laughs> Jim's four. And then Frank is right here. Frank's two. Yeah. Who else we got? We got Kyle right here. He's my oldest son. He's 27. Right. Joe? Where's Joe? Joe's back, but I think he was the guy that was uh, working that pig over. So, and then Sam, is Sam here? No, Dorothy and Sam are. Dorothy and Sam are doing something else? over there by the, by the pig. There's Dot by the farm. By the okay, farm. well they're doing something. They're taking care of that next pig that we're cooking. So, I just want to recognize them because all through this ordeal, it's, it's, you know, it's been a little bit tough, and I haven't always been there for them. And so I want to thank them and uh, tell them that, you know, better days are ahead. And, uh, but they're my, my main team, and they've been real helpful to me. Um, and I, I'd like to recognize my lawyer, Michelle Hawley, right here. Stand up. Stand up. Um, she's been really good with this. And... You know, yesterday after it was over, we said, yeah, pat on the back, did a good job. But then after all the commentary was in yesterday around the campfire, <coughs> she did a really good job, really good job. And it's kind of like what Liz said, we've got, we've got the right, what's right on our side. We're not pushing any agenda. We're just trying to make a living, and we're just trying to be free people. Um, <clears throat> through this whole process, I've learned so much about the Constitution and about the rights that we have to operate commerce and, and be in business. And uh, the Bill of Rights is, is definitely our friend. Um, I, didn't, I don't have a speech planned. I just uh, wanted to get up and say thank you to you all for coming. You know, yes, the victory was really won yesterday with all those people that showed up in that courtroom. That was really something. I heard that each person that was there rep represents 
about 10,000 people to the judge when those people show when people show up like no a thousand people I guess I'm thinking of uh, what you find a person for a feral swine. <laughs> but each person represents about a thousand people. And, uh, you know, the good thing about our system is Judge Fagerman is, a, is an elected official. And so he, he works for us. You know, you're in the courtroom to see what he's going to say. But he's looking at you thinking, I wonder what these people think. And I wonder if these people are going to vote me back in. So who's in control here? We are. We have that authority, and we have that power, but we have to utilize it. In my case, all I did when the DNR came after me and said, you ordered me to kill my, all my pigs, pigs we just had for lunch, I just said, no. And they stamped their feet, and they got all flustered, and they said, well, if you don't, we're going to beat you up and put you in a cage. And I said, go ahead. And they said, well, if you don't do that, then we're going to fine you. And I said, go ahead. And that this is where we are. They've given me a fine of $10,000 per animal equals $700,000. I'm not worth a third of that. So it's, it's ridiculous what they did. And all they did was make themselves look stupid as far as I'm concerned. I so, wanted, can I interrupt and tell you? I just cooked the organ meats with bacon, with onion and and garlic for everybody okay. to try after we have a break. So, all right, yep, organ meat from the pig. So, uh, where was I? You're not worth one third. Of the yeah, I'm not. I'm, not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worth that much, but uh, that's what they they find me. And uh, I, I just think they look really dumb doing that. And we can expect more things like that as they, as they get further and uh, closer and closer to defeat on this. And I believe that they're, they're heading that way quickly. Um, what we need to do is we need to stick together. Uh, keep the word out there. Keep this thing fresh. Don't let it die. We fully anticipate that they're going to try and push this off. So wait another six months so we'll forget about it or we'll run out of money and the farm will close down not going to happen we've been we've been at this almost two years now and we will find a way to survive we will find a way uh, we're just sitting here at the table talking about these things and maybe it's because i'm from new england but this, the conversation for me always swings around to what the patriots did the minutemen did right um, back in 1774 when they resisted the same type of tyranny that American citizens are going through now. We own this country. They don't own the country. We own it. They work for us. But if we don't stand up, if we don't stand up and make our voices known, they'll have us in chains before long. You know, we're headed in that direction. We're not in a shooting war right now. Uh, our fight is in court. And I say a shooting war metaphorically of course metaphorically of course but uh, we do have that right we do have that right um, that's about all I can think of right now a lot of times I'll just take questions can I get a question okay I'll just take questions and that helps me go from there so, yes so tell everybody that wasn't there yesterday what happened and what the outcome was and what's the next step Okay, well, from my perspective, I'll tell you what I think, but Michelle's going to get up and she's going to field a few questions, too. Um, we went in there to get a reading from the judge on a couple of different issues. We wanted to go to trial. We want to go in front of a judge. We want to go in front of our peers and tell our side of the story and let the judge decide. We would prefer a jury. What the state wanted was the whole thing thrown out yesterday and the state does not want us to have a jury. There's a few other things, that, but those are the main things in my mind. And what happened was, it, in my mind, what happened was uh, the judge was very respectful to Michelle. Um, he asked the right questions, I thought. He showed that he was uh, smart about the issues. You know, he knew what was going on. He had researched it, which isn't very difficult these days. It's everywhere. And... Uh, I, I felt very good coming out of there. I believe we will get a trial, and if we get a trial, I believe we'll, I believe we'll win. 